Welcome. This video is going to show you guys how to create normal quantile plots as well as construct confidence intervals in jump. So as always, the first thing we're going to do is open some data here. Uh, we will use the data that we saw in the lecture 12 part 1 notes regarding the carapace length of tarantulas. And the data here is in jump already. Um, in order to construct a normal quantile plot and confidence intervals, they're both found in the same options menu, but what you would do is you would go to Analyze Distribution. And we saw this before whenever we wanted the five number summary and basic summary statistics, but once we go in here, the only place that it says required is next to Y columns. So that's where we have to select our variable. So if we go ahead and choose the variable, and select OK, it will spit out the information that we had seen previously where you have a histogram, a box, pl uh, box plot, the five number summary as well as some of the other quantiles and then the summary statistics at the bottom. So if you remember in jump, most of the options are hidden under these little red triangles. Uh, these are like your drop down menus if you will. So if we select this one next to the variable name, uh, first thing I'm going to do is turn the histogram so that it looks the way that we normally do. So if you go to histogram options, there will be an option to uncheck vertical. Go ahead and do that, and it will now put the histogram in this horizontal for format that we're a little bit more used to seeing it this way. And also, I'm going to get rid of this box plot or box and whisker plot. And again, what you would do is you would select the drop-down menu, and outlier box plot is currently selected. So we'll go ahead and uncheck that, and now that box plot is gone. Okay. We want to add the or create the normal quantile plot. So again, next to your variable name, you select the down arrow. And one of the options here, the third option down, it says normal quantile plot. And if you select that, it will construct your normal quantile plot. It sort of attaches it or puts it above the histogram, if you will. If you want to export this into different software, simply right click on that graph, go down to edit. And one of the options will say copy graph. So if you would select that, then it's very, very easy to paste that into Microsoft Word or whatever word processing software you're using. OK, the other thing that we want to accomplish with this video is show you guys how to construct confidence intervals. And it's actually in the same type of area. So next to the variable name, if you go again to this little drop down menu, one of the options will say confidence interval. Now you have to be a little bit careful here because by default it has options for the 90% confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval, the 99% confidence interval, and other. However, in this chapter we were doing a special type of confidence interval known as a Z confidence interval under the assumption that we know the population standard deviation. If you choose these default ones, 90%, 95%, 99%, it's going to calculate the confidence interval based on the sample standard deviation uh, which we don't want to do at this time. So if you go to the other option, and my computer's taking a moment here, uh, here we go. This will allow us to select the confidence level that we want. So if we wanted to do a 95% confidence interval, we could leave that. However, if you wanted to change the default to, or change it to say 90%, you could do a 0.9. And there are several options. There are two-sided confidence interval, one-sided lower limit, one-sided upper limit. The ones that we discussed in our class were two-sided confidence intervals, so make sure it's checked for two-sided. And then this last option, that says use known sigma. That's the population standard deviation that we are assuming is known in this problem. So go ahead and select OK. And now we can enter what that standard deviation is. Now, unfortunately, I don't remember it from our class notes, so I'm just going to make up something for the sake of argument. Uh, let's put a 3 in there. And now, if we go ahead and select OK, the confidence interval will be found down here at the bottom of the page under confidence interval. Uh, you will notice that the 1 minus alpha, it says 0.9, so you know this is a 90% confidence interval. This has the population standard deviation that we specified. And in order to read this output, and you definitely need to know how to do this, we are looking for the confidence interval for the mean. So this line for standard deviation, we're not interested in that confidence interval. You can completely ignore that bottom line for the time being. But if we look at the line for mean, it tells you that the point estimate x bar is 18.42. We actually saw that above uh, on the summary statistics. And then the confidence interval, the lower bound is given by this number under lower CI and the upper bound is given by the number upper CI uh, for lower confidence interval and low upper confidence interval. So these numbers can be read right here um, on this output. Thank you.